Registered Phenomena Code 204 Object Class Gamma Purple Hazard Types Sapient Hazard Organic Hazard Ideological Hazard Sensory Hazard Containment Protocols RPC-204 is to be contained in a 4m x 4m standard humanoid containment chamber 20 km northwest of Site-002 at all times. This containment chamber is to be labeled as Site-002 Fallout Shelter. As of January 27, 1998, RPC-204 is to be contained in the abandoned town of Slovakia. RPC-204 must be fitted with a modified tracking device on its being at all times, capable of delivering a disabling electrical charge to RPC-204 should it attempt to breach containment. At least 100 CSD personnel must occupy the town at all times to prevent RPC-204 from breaching containment. All instances of RPC-204-1 which have been confirmed to have manifested in nearby villages are to be reported immediately, followed by the administration of amnestics to all inhabitants of the affected village. If an RPC-204-2 event occurs in a surrounding village, MST Delta-13 men in black, are to contain all inhabitants and designate them as CSD personnel. If a test involving RPC-204 is scheduled, RPC-204 must be transported to the scheduled test area via air transportation. Currently, RPC-204 has not physically attacked any personnel, and thus it is to be considered docile. RPC-204 has not attempted to breach containment since January 27, 1998. Description: RPC-204 is a humanoid entity standing at approximately 180 cm in height and weighing approximately 73 kg. RPC-204 wears a CBRN suit roughly equivalent to a Czech military model from 1993, though inconsistencies have been cited with the suit itself. RPC-204 has been confirmed to be biologically identical to a human male from the age range of 30 to 34 with the exception of greenish-gray skin. RPC-204 requires no external sustenance, suggesting the ability of self-regeneration. RPC-204 appears to be immune to all forms of damage that would be fatal to an average human. However, injuries sustained by RPC-204 from testing show that it is not totally impervious to harm. RPC-204 appears to only have a basic concept of socialization and language as when it is approached, RPC-204 will vocalize survival information for nuclear blasts in the Czech language. Despite wearing an M10-M gas mask at all times, RPC-204's vocalizations sound as if they are unobstructed. As of May 9, 1995, it has been discovered that RPC-204 cannot make these vocalizations without its gas mask. RPC-204 The Knowledge Property Manifest when RPC enters a populated area of any population size, over 250 individuals. Upon entrance, multiple instances of RPC-204-1 will manifest, followed by the manifestation of an RPC-204-2 event approximately 15 minutes later. During this period, all residents will enter a state of panic, frantically searching for fallout shelters. After an RPC-204-2 event, all humans within the affected area will begin to hallucinate a post-apocalyptic scenario, with subjects reacting differently to their situation according to their mental state prior to the RPC-204-2 event. RPC-204 will only leave the area when approximately 75% of the population of the area dies, when either approximately 75% of the area's population dies, or if violence within the area affected by RPC-204-2 ceases. Upon RPC-204 leaving an area, the remaining population will no longer hallucinate, retaining memories from the hallucinations. This often leads to suicide in most individuals. Those who do not commit suicide upon the conclusion of an RPC-204-2 event will express a strong desire to neutralize RPC-204. RPC-204-1 are a series of anomalous emergency broadcasts that begin transmitting when RPC-204 enters into a populated area. RPC-204-1 instances have shown to be identical to the alert system present in the country they manifest inside of. 
If a country does not have a dedicated emergency alert system, RPC-204-1 manifestations will appear to be identical to those of Australia's standard emergency warning signal, although translated to the language of the country it is broadcasted in. RPC-204-1 broadcasts will repeat until an RPC-204-2 event, although subsequent broadcasts are spoken in Czech. If an area's emergency alert system broadcasts in two languages, Czech will always replace the latter language. It is to be noted that all RPC-204-1 broadcasts contain inconsistencies when compared to real broadcasts, most commonly manifesting as erroneous locations and incorrect issue source of the warning. RPC-204-2 appears to be a nuclear detonation, perceivable only to individuals within an RPC-204's affected area. This detonation has never been observed to have an actual effect on the area, and for all intents and purposes, is also considered to be a hallucination. Despite this, cameras within RPC-204's affected area will capture both RPC-204-2 and its aftermath. While RPC-204-2 is harmless, almost all affected subjects will act as if they are being affected by an actual nuclear explosion, experiencing things such as the explosion's flash, intense heat, and death. When an individual affected by RPC-204 dies, they will enter into a comatose state for a period of four hours. Upon the awakening from this coma, affected individuals will see the area as affected by RPC-204-2 showing signs of destruction equivalent to those caused by a nuclear warhead with a yield of approximately 70 kilotons. Individuals will then begin to scavenge the wasteland for items such as food, water, and weapons. Over the following days, individuals will start to seek out friends, attempting to form small groups. These groups will almost always form into factions based on different paraphernalia found within the wasteland. If an unaffected individual entered RPC-204's affected area, after the manifestation of RPC-204-2, they will not experience the hallucinations caused by RPC-204. However, individuals who are affected will begin to target unaffected individuals, referring to them as demons. Due to this, all affected individuals are to be designated RPC-204-3. As of May 7, 1998, it has been discovered that this behavior only manifests if the unaffected individual enters the area affected by RPC-204 after all instances of RPC-204-3 have awoken from the comatose state caused by RPC-204-2. Discovery RPC-204 was discovered on March 2, 1997, when a video of a supposed nuclear detonation within the Czech Republic was uploaded onto the Internet. Authority agents quickly discovered the location of the detonation and sent two operatives to the Czech Republic to investigate. When the operatives arrived, the locals all appeared to be alive with no signs of damage to the town itself. The locals began to attack the agents, which they were able to evade. All civilians were sedated using anesthetic gas. RPC-204 was then spotted without its gas mask on. Its odd skin color, as well as its passiveness, led to the containment of RPC-204 by the Authority. Test Log 1 Date October 21, 1997 Procedure The abandoned town of Kitsault, British Columbia, Canada was chosen as the site for the initial test of RPC-204. The town would be populated by 670 CSD personnel. Outside of the construction of a sporting goods store with a sizable amount of firearms, the placement of cameras to watch the test, and the placement of televisions in every house. Kit Salt was not interfered with. Test variables were not modified, allowing factions to naturally occur if any were formed. Results. Upon the entrance of RPC-204, the Alberta Emergency Population Warning System displayed on all available television sets, despite Kit Salt being located in British Columbia. RPC-204-2 manifested exactly 15 minutes after the start of the broadcast. Four hours later, all 670 CSD personnel had awoken, and proceeded to scavenge the town. Two factions were observed the next day, with entirely different motives. The first, Columbia's Sword, appeared to take many influences from the United States during the Second World War, 
wearing olive green clothing with crude white stars painted on. The other, the Iron Rail, appeared to take influences from the German Reich around the same period. On day three of the test, a notable armed conflict occurred between both factions. When 167 inhabitants out of the original 670 were left alive, RPC-204 attempted to leave the town. Before it did so, it was captured by Authority agents and quickly recontained. All remaining individuals overlooked the casualties from the conflict, many taking their lives. Those who did not were administered amnestics and put back into service as CSD personnel. Analysis. The initial test was a success. Now that we have a baseline to go off of, we can use this information for further testing. Head Researcher Lautinen Test Log 2 Date January 25, 1998 Procedure The abandoned village of Slovakia was chosen as a site for the second test of RPC-204. Only 247 CSD personnel were assigned to populate for this test. No modifications were made to due to its recent abandonment. Results. Upon the entrance of RPC-204, no broadcast appeared to manifest. After 24 hours of no anomalous manifestations occurring, the test was ended, with all CSD personnel returning to regular CSD duties. Was assigned as RPC-204's containment site on January 27, 1998. Analysis. Failure. However, we now know how to contain RPC-204 effectively. Head Researcher Lautinen Test Log 3 Date May 7, 1998 Procedure A fake settlement known as Kelly was built in the desert region of Queensland, Australia. A fake museum dedicated to notorious Australian bushranger Ned Kelly was built in the center of the town. The scheduled variable was an attempt to force the formation of factions. Thus, retractable walls were built through the center of the town, cutting the museum in half. The museum has been filled with firearms, most commonly L1A1 SLRs and AKM pattern rifles. Two researchers, including head researcher Lautinen, will be part of the experiment to guide the formation for the planned factions, and are thus to equip special faction leader armor located inside the museum. 1,000 CSDs were assigned to populate Kelly with 500 going on each side of the town. Each side has been equipped with a radio, with the Constable radio linking to a broadcast originating from London, while the Bush Ranger radio connects to a station located within Site-002. Results. Upon the entrance of RPC-204, the standard emergency warning signal, Australia's emergency warning system had activated. Two minutes after the manifestation of RPC-204-2, both researchers infiltrated the town. Lawtonen took the role of Ned Kelly, while a second researcher, William Carrington, took the role of the Viceroy. Upon the awakening of both groups of CSD, both leaders directed their group of CSDs to the museum. Both groups equipped themselves with uniforms and firearms and were directed back to listen to a radio broadcast. After doing so, both groups were instructed to shoot the other group of individuals on site. The retractable walls receded allowing both sides to engage each other. A brief skirmish lasted for two days. RPC-204 attempted to leave when 251 survivors, almost all belonging to the Bush Ranger faction, with the exception of Kerrigan, were left alive. RPC-204 was then recaptured, and afterwards, Carrington was returned to a temporary authority base 50 km away. However, Lautinen, along with his army, proceeded to go rogue and attacked Authority agents. The fake town of Kelly was then destroyed with a small thermonuclear device with a yield of two tons. This detonation led to the neutralization of all rogue assets. Carrington was promoted to head researcher of RPC-204. Analysis Success Factions can be forced, it turns out. A shame that Kielski had died like that, however. He was loyal, and he was my friend. Head Researcher Carrington Test Log 4 Date March 1, 1999 Procedure An additional fake settlement, known as New Siberia City, was built along the River in Alaska. No test variables would be directly modified. Instead, 
the CSD population would be incentivized to establish a democratic system inside New Siberia City. Due to the size of New Siberia City, 2,000 CSDs were assigned to populate New Siberia City, with over half being political prisoners or otherwise minor penalty criminals. Result. Upon the entrance of RPC-204, an emergency action notification message broadcasted by the emergency alert system was triggered. RPC-204-2 manifested exactly 15 minutes after the start of the broadcast, as with the other tests. Four hours later, all 2,000 CSD personnel had awoken, and proceeded to take up residence inside of the City Hall building. One of the CSD personnel, noted as being CSD-11817, discovered New Siberia City's library, which contained many books on democracy. CSD-11817 then proceeded to share the information contained within the books to its affiliates, who then spread this information further. Two weeks after the CSD entered the library, a democratic system was successfully established inside of New Siberia City, with the leader holding the title of mayor. CSD-11817, now the mayor of New Siberia City, established a police force the next day. On April 2, 1999, RPC-204 attempted to leave New Siberia City, where it was then recaptured. Upon its capture, a vocalization was reported from RPC-204. Instead of recovering all personnel, as with the other tests, New Siberia City was left populated due to the success and findings of the experiment. However, the entire population was heavily administered amnestics. To this day, New Siberia City remains populated albeit under authority supervision for psychological effects. Analysis. Resounding success. It seems that if we don't force, they don't fight. They are peaceful solutions, plus I bet I could interview RPC-204. Head Researcher Carrington. Interview Log. Date. May 9, 1999. After the reported vocalization from RPC-204, Carrington decided to interview RPC-204. Unable to speak Czech, a translating software was installed in the Keratin section of the interview cell. Forward. The following is the interview between Head Researcher Keratin and RPC-204 recorded in… Slovakia. Begin Log. Hello, 204. Nuclear explosions can cause significant damage and casualties from blast, heat, and radiation. Oh. This is not what I expected. Not really aware of your surroundings, are you? Get inside the nearest building to avoid radiation. Brick or concrete are best. Are you even capable of speech? RPC-204 proceeds to take off his M10-M gas mask. From this point, it is unable to make further vocalizations. Well, that confirms it. End log. RPC-204 proceeds to exit the interview chamber, with Keratin boarding transport back to Site-002. Failure was reported from Keratin just before departure. Test Log 5 Date January 30, 2000 Procedure The abandoned capital of the island of Montserrat, Plymouth, was chosen for this test. Prior to the test, all volcanic ash was cleared out of Plymouth, so as to prevent early deaths of the test subjects. 350 CSDs were assigned to populate Plymouth, with one CSD being withheld and given unique clothing and equipment, as well as instructions to take power by force. This CSD, known later by the Plymouthites as Gas Mask, was directed to become the ruler of Plymouth. Results. Upon the entrance of RPC-204, an emergency alert almost identical to Australia's standard emergency warning signal was broadcast. RPC-204-2 manifested exactly 30 minutes after the start of the broadcast contrary to all other tests. When all other CSDs were sedated by RPC-204, the Dictator CSD, noted as being CSD-4497, was brought into Plymouth. Four hours later, all 350 CSD personnel had awoken. Before they could move, the Dictator CSD began to give a speech, promising food and housing to the other personnel, causing many to cheer. Unrest was spotted as soon as day one of the test, when a protester was killed by CSD-4497's security force. Over the course of two months, 
a resistance group was spotted arming themselves with military-grade weapons. On April 1, 2000, this group of individuals entered the residence of CSD-4497. A brief skirmish occurring for only 20 minutes resulted in the deaths of both the entirety of the security force and the entire resistance. Upon the end of this skirmish, RPC-204 attempted to leave Plymouth, walking directly back to its transportation chamber. Upon the end of this test, all surviving CSDs were put back into CSD service. Upon the end of this test, all surviving CSDs were put back into CSD service, and an eruption of the Sofriere Hills volcano was started with a two-ton yield nuclear device. Analysis, both a success and a failure, shows they don't like force again, but they all fought to the death only three months after. Not what I intended to happen this quickly. Head researcher Carrington. Test Log 6 Date July 21, 2000 Procedure The abandoned city of Hiroshima, Cyprus, was chosen as the test site. Prior to the test, all surrounding areas were evacuated temporarily, citing Turkish military activity. For this test, a fake cult had been set up, known as the Sect of Tizen. Upon the awakening of all CSD personnel, most would be administered mind-altering amnestics in order to falsify belief in Tizen. 350 CSD personnel would be assigned for this test. Results. Upon the entrance of RPC-204, an emergency alert almost identical to Australia's standard emergency warning signal was broadcast. RPC-204-2 manifested exactly 15 minutes after the start of the broadcast, much like all tests excluding Test 5. When all CSDs were left comatose by RPC-204-2, amnestics were issued to a randomly chosen 337 individuals. Upon the awakening of the CSD personnel, the first to be administered amnestics declared himself to be the Acolytes. One hour after this event, the Acolytes ordered the immediate exile of all non-believers. The unaffected 112 individuals were then forcefully removed from Barosha. Authority security cameras then captured these non-believers walking toward suspicious-looking individuals outside of the testing zone. For four hours, a period of infighting between the affected individuals occurred, only resulting in four casualties. On the next day of the test, all remaining subjects were found dead via unknown means. RPC-204, still Roman Verosha, was then captured by Authority agents. All bodies were removed from Barosha for autopsy and disposal, and nearby settlements were allowed to be repopulated. Analysis. Failure. But it was from the outside. This baffles me. It was not RPC-204 or this would have happened before. Pair that with those figures. Could this be an attack? Head Researcher Carrington. Incident Log. Date. February 11, 2010. Incident. Another test was scheduled to occur in the abandoned town of Elizabeth Bay, Namibia, involving the introduction of RPC-834 mutants into the wasteland created by RPC-204-2. However, before the test could even begin properly, a CSD rebellion had occurred. All 834-1 instances, as well as head researcher Carrington, were killed during this rebellion. RPC-204 was unaffected by this incident was able to be recovered from the site. The whereabouts of the CSD personnel who participated in the rebellion are still unknown.